The U.S. Navy wants lasers. The Navy is looking for a few good lasers, big ones. The U.S. Navy has awarded a 150 million U.S. dollar contract to Lockheed Martin for two Helios weapon systems by 2020. The Helios system combines a laser weapon, long-range intelligence, surveillance and reconnaissance (ISR), and counter unmanned aerial system capabilities. It's designed to counter drones and small boats, as well as provide long-range ISR capabilities to decision-makers. The first unit will be integrated onto an Arleigh Burke-class destroyer, while the second unit will be used for land testing at the White Sands Missile Range. Ashley, what the Navy needs to be spending money on is some frickin' sharks with laser beams. Cover your ears, but not your eyes. The Navy has a brand new badass toy. If you're a fan of video games, then you've surely heard of a railgun. Well, the U.S. Navy has been testing a real one. The U.S. Navy recently released test fire footage from November 2016 of its electromagnetic railgun. The test was performed at Dahlgren's Naval Facility's new terminal range in Virginia. A railgun is comprised of three parts, a power source, a pair of parallel rails, and a moving armature. An electrical pulse is sent from the positive terminal of the power supply, up the positive rail, across the armature, and down the negative rail, back to the power supply. The loop induces a magnetic field around each rail that pushes on the projectile. This force is the Lorentz force. Using this force, rail guns can fire projectiles at speeds of over 4,500 miles per hour. The projectile is a non-explosive shell filled with tungsten pellets inside an aluminum alloy casing. The casing falls away after the projectile leaves the barrel. Rail guns require 20 to 32 megajoules of energy and can hit fixed targets up to 220 miles away. Targets are then destroyed by the projectile's massive kinetic force. The kinetic energy warhead destroys its targets by its extreme speed upon impact. This eliminates the hazards of carrying high explosives and having unexploded ordinances scattered on the battlefield. Railguns also eliminate the need for chemical propellants, such as gunpowder. This means they could be potentially much cheaper to operate and can fire faster than current naval weaponry. Futuristic U.S. Navy destroyer takes its first sea trials. The U.S. Navy's largest and most expensive ever destroyer took to the Atlantic Ocean on Monday for its first test in open seas. The 600-foot-long, 15,000-ton USS Zumwalt took four years to build at a cost of $4.3 billion. The ship is designed to appear on radar as a small boat, such as a fishing vessel. Its tumble-home hull angles inward as it rises from the waterline. The Zumwalt's two 155mm guns can fire self-projected weapons, which can be guided in flight at targets up to 63 miles away. Further tests are scheduled on an electromagnetic railgun that can hit targets more than 100 miles away. The Zumwalt is powered by a 78 megawatt power plant and is the US Navy's first all-electric warship. The ship is about 100 feet longer and 20 feet wider than the US Navy's current class of destroyers and can hit top speeds in excess of 30 knots. Advanced Hypersonic Weapon Fails During Test in Alaska An experimental hypersonic missile developed by the U.S. military was destroyed four seconds after its test launch in Alaska early on Monday. The weapon, known as the Advanced Hypersonic Weapon, can carry a nuclear bomb or conventional payload weighing up to 12,000 pounds and was developed by Sandia National Laboratory and the U.S. Army. It is part of a program to create a missile that can hit targets anywhere on Earth within an hour of acquiring data and receiving permission to launch. The weapon was launched by a rocket at the Kodiak Launch Complex on Kodiak Island off the southern Alaska coast on Monday. It was scheduled to glide to its target, the Kwajalein Atoll, in the South Pacific. The Pentagon said an anomaly was noticed just after liftoff and the mission terminated to ensure public safety. The weapon had successfully flown from Hawaii to the Kwajalein Atoll in a previous test in November 2011. Drone Defender Rifle uses radio waves to disable drones. Shooting a drone or UAV out of the sky with a shotgun is potentially both illegal and dangerous. But a new weapon may soon provide an effective and non-violent way of disabling unwanted UAVs. The Ohio-based Battelle Memorial Institute, a private nonprofit science and tech development company, has announced the creation of the Drone Defender. 
a shoulder-mounted, rechargeable, rifle-like weapon that takes UAVs offline with a blast of radio waves. The Drone Defender weighs just 4.5 kilos, or 10 pounds, and can target a drone up to 400 meters or over 1,300 feet away. The rifle fires waves of electromagnetic energy tuned to common GPS and ISM frequencies, disabling the UAV by blocking it from receiving commands. The radio waves from a drone defender should activate the disabled drone's safety protocol, making it hover, land, or return to its point of origin. Vital says the defender could be used to protect prisons, schools, or historical sites, and of course has military and law enforcement applications as well. No information on the price of the drone defender has yet been released, but the device is expected to go on sale in 2016.